Good morning, good morning. Welcome everybody to the Saturday Morning Mastermind. I'm your host, Samantha Studebaker Carl. I'm here with my good friends, Dan and Karen and Catherine, and Lori should be jumping on here shortly as well. Um, before we get going, I wanna give everybody an opportunity to introduce themselves. And, oh, but before I do that, I wanna tell you what we're talking about. Um, today on the Saturday Morning Mastermind, we're gonna continue our discussion of chapter seven of the book, Love, Life, God by Jared Hewitt. And we're going to be talking about this concept, um, the zero point, uh, the point of total being where you're free to choose. Um, so let's go ahead and um, guys jump out, introduce yourselves, and then we can get into this conversation. Hello, it's Catherine Clement here. Hi, it's Karen Lohoff, and I just realized this morning that the time had changed six days ago. So, uh, fortunately, I'm on. Good morning, everybody. Yes, I think the time change has kind of played with all of us because I woke up to the dark again, so was getting used to it being just getting light as I would wake up, so threw me off uh, but glad to be here and ready to uh, look, jump into more of this chapter. Awesome, guys. And, and if you were watching last week, we kind of were touching on this concept of how we kind of create our own discomfort in our lives. I think I titled it um, How to Recognize When You're Creating Your Own Personal Hell. And, um, you know, and, and that will kind of help us go into this this section here because talking about being at the zero point is where we're at a point where we're not creating unpleasantness for ourselves but um we're in a point of uh more of a, a choice versus um, what's the word i'm looking for when you're being pushed along in a direction because of your your beliefs or your judgments or your kind of uh your fears and that sort of thing so um i was just going to read a little bit of a section in here so we can kind of get an idea of what they're talking about and uh, maybe segue from what we were talking about last week into into this week so <clears throat> let me just get over here okay so we're talking about um kind of lack and abundance <clears throat> and it says let's look at polarity Within the energy of abundance, there is a choice for lack. Within I want it is the choice of I don't want it. And as you move forward in releasing your stories, you may find that you are experiencing some of the past. Your past vibra or your past patterns may reemerge. This is simply what you would call the polarity that exists within the vibration of letting go of your stories and is the vibration of not letting go. In order to neutralize the polarities in your perception and move into total choice, we ask that you move into total love, total trust, and total harmony. For harmony is living without polarities. It is living in eternal choice. When you can know with all of your being, then you may choose with all of your being, and what you call polarity will cease to exist because there's no room for doubt or struggle. When this is achieved, you are at the zero point, the point of total being, where you are always free to choose. You become an active creator rather than simply creating on autopilot or creating based on wishy-washy wants that are in opposition to vibrations of your core beliefs. <clears throat> so it's kind of, it's explaining that we, we get this feeling of polarity and, um, and then it's saying that polarity is, is kind of like when we're in like an, um, a contradictory feeling where we say, for instance, um, we want, uh, you know, we want something, say we want to be more um, successful in our business. I'll give that as an example, since I'm in business for myself. And, um, and I say, you know, I want more success in my business. I want to make more money. I want, you know, our to have employees and grow our company, et cetera. But yet then I have this other feeling of this fear feeling that is like, oh gosh, you know, if I have this successful business, it's going to be so much more responsibility. And I'm going to have all these people who's, who's working for us, whose lives are going to be, you know, I, I'm going to affect their lives in some way because they're, they're on my payroll and, and, um, 
you know, and I'm going to have all these trucks on the road and then I'm going to be worried about them getting in accidents and, and, you know, and all of these different things. So, so I have this, you know, on one hand, I'm, I'm eager to grow a business and have that success. But on the other hand, I have all these fears related to it. And so I think that when they're talking about this polarity is the pol polarity is that kind of like um, the pull between the two things that you want. And what it's asking us to do is get to this zero point in the middle where we're, we're not, um, or I don't even know if it's necessary a, a zero point in the middle as much as just letting go of all of these fears because we say we want this thing but yet we're acting and being and doing based on our fears or our, our judgments about a situation. And so it's wanting us to, to let go of our stories and our stories are the things that, like, you know, the things I'm telling myself that are, are causing me to have fear, you know, like this idea of, okay, if I have a driver out there on a road and I don't know how experienced they are and, or I don't know if they've ever driven in snow or ice and it's snow or icy out. And I'm like, oh gosh, you know, what am I going to do if, so I'm like, get all these stories in my head about, um, you know, all the what if stories that cause me fear. And so what it's talking about is letting go of all of that stuff so that I can be in the free choice area. And, and so that, and that's kind of a harder concept to really wrap your head around when are, you know, and throughout my whole life, it's been difficult to, okay, I say that I want this one experience, but yet I have all these fears, they automatically come up so quickly, that I have a hard time staying in that kind of um, creation vibration, if you will, or that, that um, letting go of the fear, letting go of the stories aspect of it. And of course, when, when they're talking about letting it go, um, they give us a tool, which is basically saying that I am self-love, just say I am self-love. And that is supposed to bring you back to this calm space where you can let go of all your fears and be in the, the creative spot, I guess it is. And, um, the, the, the place of choice, if you will, of course we all think, okay, I have choice all the time, right? And, but right now in the moment when I'm having all these fears, I'm choosing to have the fears, whether I realize that I'm choosing those fears or not is irrelevant. I'm choosing them. And so what it's talking about is letting go of all of those so that I can be in a space of clarity, I guess you could say, and not, and making my decisions based on my desires versus all of my fears. So um, that's kind of what I I'm thinking that they're trying to tell us on that. What do you guys think? I'll jump out. I put a comment on the live stream and um, basically what I was put in there was I said, I also think that we sometimes uh, we need to go through the polarity to get to the zero points to operate in true love maybe. And what I was thinking of is like maybe in through that and when we learn and realize and maybe, you know, going through all the different types of books and things we've gone through over the course of the years have helped us to open our eyes to, you know, the fact that we do have more choices, that we do have uh, things, abilities within us to help us move in the direction that we want to move. <laughs> but sometimes until we learn and understand that, we get so caught up in all that and we let that kind of rule everything we do rather than stepping back and saying no I have more you know control over this or uh, a little more say in how I respond and it, like you were talking about how sometimes we get so caught up in fear and I'll go back to something in the bible where you know um, I'm paraphrasing I don't remember the exact but basically you know in the bible we're, t uh, we're told by Jesus not to live or operate in fear you know not to you know we're not to operate in that mode yes there's the natural fear like when say like a you know wild animal or something comes up or something like that but other things that are more you know made throughout what we're experiencing with each other and in our day-to-day -day lives 
and we allow fear to operate and control us, we're not meant to be, we're not meant to live in that. We're supposed to be able to be strong and, and walk through that. And I think maybe part of that aspect of that is, you know, remembering who we are and the self-love and that we're letting the fear control us rather than we control the fear and letting ourselves be able to move ourselves forward through whatever it is that we're working through. I think that this is a still point is a huge jump for most people. I mean, think about it. A, a great majority, like we tend to think because we're on here every week and we kind of, you know, guide our lives through these principles that that there's a lot of other people out there doing the same, especially because a lot of us have you know, been involved with companies that really uh, promote sort of positive mindset and, you know, uh, putting yourself, with, um, you know, making your own way and not letting limiting beliefs limit you and things. And, and we've seen like huge crowds of people. And so our minds just kind of take that and they, and then they multiply it and they think, oh, well, everybody thinks like that. Well, no, very many people even read a book these days or, or watch something to try to, you know, better things. A lot of people are just out there really trying to survive day to day. And, and even people that you know, like us that live by these sorts of thoughts and principles, we, we have our struggles real as they are enough, but there's people out there that just don't have any concept of self-improvement or non-judgment, non um, like the I would be very, uh, feel very safe to say that the vast majority of humans on this earth are, are, you know, not anywhere near even considering being not judgmental because they, they feel like they're justified in their judgments, you know, so um, they, most people have never considered the fact that, like the last book we read, that, that, that there's a possibility, I'm not saying that this is how it is, but that most people have never considered the possibility even that they pre-planned their life and their challenges. I mean, just that in itself is such a huge jump for most people. So for this chapter to take us into still point is almost comical to me on, on one hand, but um, it's definitely... Uh, you know, you, they're just asking you to take this huge leap of, um, you know, understanding that everything serves, everything serves, whether we judge it to be good or bad, everything is serving. And so they're asking you to step back and say, okay, basically, you know, it, it's all, everything's good. It's all good. Stop judgment because the judging is the judging and the comparing, you know, that's really where we get into the, um, that's when the negative thoughts start coming in because then you're assuming that this situation is better than another. One part of this chapter that really spoke to me because being a, a nurse for my career and then being an, an energy worker, energy healer uh, throughout my life is that it's, you know, I loved how you were making the comparison, Samantha, about how, you know, you want your business to build, but then you don't want your business to build because of this and this and this. And I'm exactly the same way in a, in a whole different thing you know, I wanted, uh, and I've tried at various times in my life to build my healing business. And then there's this part of me that says, but Catherine, for you to be a healer, somebody has to be sick. 
well, that freaks me out. Like, I can't deal with that. I don't want somebody else to get sick so that I can feel better about myself and somehow helping them heal. Like, that is so contradictory to me. And, and, and I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, my healing business is where it is because, uh, you know, I, I don't want to promote illness among people and um it, it's it, it's challenging as a human to i mean yes everybody wants that piece of that still point but it's challenging to get there like it, it's not just something well some people get thrown into it through like an out-of-body experience or a near-death experience or something like that but for most people, it's just really a challenging place. And yet it's such a freeing place, even if you can just get there for a moment, you know, if you can just for a moment, imagine that everything really is exactly as it should be. And you can find peace in that moment. You know, then a lot of us have learned the technique of anchoring a moment where then we can revert back to that moment when we need it. And, and I think that's definitely a good practice. But to stay in still point all the time, I have to say, because I know people that do it, it's almost inhuman. Um, in fact, it is inhuman. I'll just say that. Like, it's, that's not a human experience. That's a soul experience and a spirit experience. And it's definitely, you know, good. But as human beings trying to live here on a planet with, with, all this, you know, they say, well, if you don't believe in duality, it doesn't exist. Well, that, okay. I mean, you can detach. There's actually some mental illnesses that are quite, <laughs> we, we, we lock people up for being that detached, you know? So um, I'm in, a, of course, quite a few different groups. And one of the groups that I'm in is, you know, energy, they're all energy healers in there. And, and, um, there's a lot of, you know, well, if you don't believe in the virus, it doesn't exist. And if you don't believe in this, it doesn't exist. And, and yeah, I mean, you can, you can step back and take that viewpoint and you probably experience a lot more peace in your life. And, but I, I'm not sure that that's quite reality. Like, <laughs> because I know people that have died of the virus. So the virus exists. And um, I don't think that it only killed them because they believed in it, you know? Because some of them didn't actually. I was gonna jump out and say a point um, for you, Catherine, because you say that you feel like your healing business or what, you know, part of what you're about is, where you're at because you're don't wish anybody to be sick or be hurt and stuff and yet if we're going based on this chapter and based on this book it's not you that's doing it to them it's them that's kind of doing it to themselves in a way where you know and so therefore you're the conduit to help them get out of that but I don't think, you know, I don't think y you have to take that idea that, you know, you don't wish anything on them because none of us wish anything on any anybody in those respects of you like, you know, whatever, you know. Um, but yet still it happens. And if you are the one that can be the one to help heal them or guide them or get them to where, um you can get them to a better state. I think that's a good thing. I think there's nothing, you know, that should keep you from helping them if you can help them in that state and, and not put yourself in that position because almost going back to some of the things you were saying there, I think then at that point, you're not acting in self-love and being total love in that. And I don't, that's just my thoughts. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but and have to hear the way you said that and knowing your heart and knowing, you know, what you're about and what you're, you know, the love that you do have in your heart for P 
people in general, it almost, I, I, I almost feel like you're, you know, you're not getting to that zero point in that area. I've been kind of hovering over, um, I guess the last couple of sentences that you read, Samantha. Um, it says, in order to neutralize the polarities in your perception and move into total choice, we ask that you move into total love, total trust, and total harmony. Just that portion of that sentence, I think, uh, for myself, how can I do that? How can I do it and sustain that? And it seems for one thing th that I would only be capable of doing that if totally by myself. And then in pretty much a meditative state, um, you know, this, this is tricky. You say that a large part of the world doesn't even think about trying to not be judging and so forth. And I, and I do think that that's correct. Um, but a large part of us who are making an effort who read the books, who discuss amongst ourselves, you know, what does this mean? How can we apply it to our lives? Um, you know, it's, maybe not for you, but for me, it's extremely difficult to even contemplate. It says, when, can you, when you can know with all of your being, then you may choose with all of your being. And what you call polarity will cease to exist because there will be no room for doubt or struggle. Well, many of you know that uh, in the recent years, I have finally come to the awareness that I no longer believed in uh, the religion that I was raised in. And you could encapsulize pretty much how to think uh, in that religion with that right there. You know, with all your being, the whole idea is uh, that you already know that this is true. And since you know it's true, then you can choose with all your being. And you, of course, are going to choose like I'm going to choose or like they are going to choose or like um, whatever. And what you call polarity will cease to exist because there will be no room for doubt or struggle. So don't say that you have doubt. Don't say that you struggle. Don't think that you doubt. Don't think that you struggle because you know with all your being. And I think that, you know, as I've looked around to see if other churches had the same beliefs, not necessarily in a handbasket, all of them, but this belief and that belief and another belief um, many religions had, uh, you know, s several of the beliefs that I had been trained with. And um, it's, it's been a challenge to me, just one of many challenges, but it has been a, a big deal challenge to me to recognize that I have thought, that I have known with all of my being, that I have uh, made my choices because I knew with all of my being. Um, if, if you wanna talk zero point or, or, or however else you described it, um, you know, that's, that's stripping things down for many of us on the planet. Uh, way, way down. Uh, I don't know if I've made sense to anybody. I don't know if I've made sense to myself. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think you, you have made sense, Karen. And, and, um, and, and I feel like you, like what Catherine was saying, I mean, a lot of people aren't even, uh, you know, aren't even aware that there's a possibility that maybe they can see things differently. And, um, and I think that's totally true. A lot of people aren't even trying and they're just stuck in their, in their existence in the way that it is. But for those of us who are trying, and I'm guessing that anybody who might be watching this is trying in some way to improve themselves or make their lives happier or whatever, or, you know, whatever we're trying to do. And, um, you know, I guess what I'm trying to, to say is that we're, I, I feel like it, it would be really difficult and maybe this, this is my polarity with this, it's difficult aspect of it, but I think it'd be really difficult to be in a zero point all the time with everything. And, um, you know, I mean, you'd basically like what you were saying, uh, Karen, have to be by yourself. And, um, and like, you know, we see people go off and, and, you know, go into this meditative, whatever, they've become a monk for a while. And some people are monks for their whole lives, you know, and sure they can, they can, maybe experience some of that just because they're not thinking about anything they're not looking at anything they're not seeing anything they're just focused right here and this is it and when you're when you're in this little tunnel then yeah i mean it's easy to to stay in a in a in a peaceful state when you're not being bombarded with 10 million different things all the time and um but i think for us is that we can get to the zero point in some aspects of our lives and we can recognize when we are causing ourselves discomfort and and work on those things and of course what it's saying for us to do is it's trying to give us like a really easy thing to do to get to that kind of that that calm space of just stop whatever you're doing or thinking or feeling or whatever and just say i am self-love and because when you bring yourself to that point, then, okay, you're, you're not focused on all your fears. You're not focused on your, your judgments. You're not focused on all that. You're just right now, you're taking this moment and you're refocusing, getting to that calm point. Or like what Kat, Catherine was saying of, you know, uh, we have all, well, not all of us, but we have talked about <clears throat> finding a calm space and being able to bring ourselves back into it. And I think that's what it's talking about there. So like when I'm struggling in my, business <clears throat> and I I'm saying that I want one thing but yet I'm having these fears of something completely different and as I'm moving instead into a space of trust and if you're religious it's you know trust God it's trust Jesus it's it's trust that he knows the best thing for you and if you're not religious and you're talking about just trusting your own higher spiritual self then you're trusting that, okay, these desires that I have are valid. This is what I want. I, I am accepting the fact that I do have these fears, but I'm going to let go of those at least in this moment so I can stay in this peaceful space and not be so focused on all of this other stuff that, you know, I don't want. And instead just be in peace and trust that I'm going to know the right thing to do in the right moment. And that, that can be really difficult when you're going through something. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted to kind of bring up a different example, because I think that even though we can struggle in these different areas and different parts of our lives, is that we already are at the zero point in a lot of different ways for other things. And, you know, for instance, when I was in my pet, pet grooming business, I just knew it was all going to work and it was all going to be good. And, and, um, you know, I had confidence in myself and my, in my job and what I was doing. And, and I just, um, I had a good picture of what it was and I didn't have as many fears. And so those decisions that I made were easier and it was, it, it was just, you know, I mean, we, we have these places and these parts of our lives where we're confident and and we can shift from being in a space of fear into a more confident space like when um you know my husband and i were struggling for a lot of years and it was because i was focusing on the things that i was unhappy about and when i went and switched over to focusing on the things that i was happy about then that created a a freer 
not not as much judgment space or freer um you, you know i focused on what i wanted versus what i didn't want and then that kind of helped create a better space for us and now i'm in kind of more, more of a uh you know a peaceful space within our relationship where i'm not constantly thinking about all the things that annoy me about him but i will tell you i am not at completely zero point all the time in our relationship. I don't know that that's even possible. I mean, uh, like, you know, Catherine was saying, you know, if you, if you were just in that, uh, you know, if we were spiritual beings and that's all we were, then it would be peace all the time, but we're not, we're humans. And so we have the ups and downs in our lives. And, you know, it was like the other day I got up and then, and there there was a thing that he had not done and I was frustrated with it and it it made me angst you know frustrated all day long and I didn't pull myself out of it I didn't sit here and try and go into this peaceful space I just wallowed in my about it you know and um and we do that and 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 that's okay I think I think that you know if we recognize that that's what we're doing and we allow ourselves to be human for a little while, I think that's okay. And and I think like what you were talking about, Catherine, of some of the spiritualists, just, you know, they're, I feel like they're being judgmental, you know, when they say we can't be human, we have to just be spiritual all the time, you know, and, uh, but that's not realistic. If we were spirits only, then sure, that might be realistic, but we're not, we're human, and we have human emotions, we have the, all these stories that we tell ourselves that um, <clears throat> we go through and we struggle with and and um, but we can find our peace in certain things we can um, recognize when we're making ourselves miserable you know it's like last week Catherine you mentioned being in in a lot of pain and you were you were struggling with that and there's two aspects to it. One is your your body is in the pain and you're experiencing that and it sucks. I know how it is, you know, with, with not long-term pain because I haven't had that, but I have had migraines, which are just so intensifying or, or they're just so intense. And, um, you know, if I, if I'm in the pain, the pain sucks. And if I am trying to be at peace within the pain, it's, it's a struggle, but at least that's all it is. It's just pain. But if I'm sitting there and I'm going, God, this hurts. I hate it. I'm so upset with my body. What the heck? Then I'm causing myself an additional pain. So we have this, this ability to be in pain and cause ourselves more pain. And we, we, if we recognize that, then we can stop doing the extra, you know, (laughs) we can stop doing the, 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 the extra credit on pain and just do, you know, uh, you just recognize that we're in the pain. It's not so much fun, but I don't have to also complain about it and say, you know, how horrible I'm, and it was talking about in, in one of the sections, it it says that, um, what was it talking about the, um, sometimes we, uh, like a, like, oh, I have outlined it. Um, oh, okay. Sometimes we don't love what we are. It says sometimes we do not love that which we that which we are, and in a place of non-love, we create and allow further exploration of not loving ourselves. And so, you know, like when we're upset at our body for not being what we want it to be, you know, and for for me, you know, when I'm in my migraines, it's hard to stay out of that space of you know, not being angry and, and frustrated with my body for that. But uh, on other aspects, it's like, you know, I have this whole thing with weight loss, it's like the roller coaster of weight loss. And I think a lot of people go through that in their lives where they're, they're angry at themselves and frustrated with their bodies and, and wish things were easier. And when we wallow in all of that, you know, judgment about what we think we should do or act or be or whatever, we're causing ourselves an additional pain on top of what we're already experiencing. And, uh, and we can recognize that we're doing that and choose to not do it. So um, that's it for the moment. Well, I was going to jump out and say, I, I like some of the points that you and Karen brought out, you know, um, and I agree with you, Karen, it's hard to be you know, in that space of, you know, total whatever, you know, because 
like I said, it would almost have to be, we'd have to be in, a, in our full spiritual selves um, or soulful selves or what that full place in order to maintain that. But I also feel that um, that within us, we are, we have that spiritual and that soul self in there. It's just learning to get the two on the, you know, the human sa side of us and that side of us together. And maybe that's part of getting to that zero point two of what it was talking about, you know, uh, self love, self, um, or total love, total trust, and total harmony, you know, putting the two of those even into, you know, that lining up to where then whatever we put out is what vibrational. Um, uh, vibrational energy we put out to others that hopefully resonates with them and then we can work on showing that total love, you know, total trust and total harmony with them and get that established because right now I'm dealing with a friend that we've been friends for a lot of years, but there for a while we really lost touch with each other. And this is a friend of mine that every time we tend to get together, he, uh, the vibrational energy I get from him is always negative. And he always like for lots of years would, you know, say I wasn't this, I wasn't strong. I wasn't this, I wasn't. All. And I'm like, yes, I am. But your energy is so draining on me that you get me so irritated. And so, you know, it's, and we lost touch for it. And I never, I didn't have that, that draining energy around and it was really nice, but you know, we've kind of reconnected again because he's been needing some help with, and because of my experience with accounting and taxes and stuff, and I don't mind helping him. I just don't want all the, you know, so I'm trying to keep things at a certain level, you know, but I'm not, you know, trying to, um, force anything either I, i'm going with the attitude if he really if it's really important to him he'll will get in, in touch with me he will follow through on what he says he wants to do and do that i'm more than willing but i'm not going to chase around i'm not going to try and pin him down to get it worked out so i can get him his ish, issue done and worked out him you know for him so that way i can kind of push him out i'm just not wanting to let that in until he is ready to be willing to put the time, energy, and effort in because at that point, then I just want to focus on that. So let's get this done. Let's get this squared away. So, you know, my suggestions and my advice to help you, and then you can go on your merry way and, you know, let's not talk for another five or six months, you know, because he, that energy really drains on me and it just wears me down and I don't like that. And I, re you know, and I think that sometimes things we, you know, come across in the people we meet and they can be good friends, you know, we can care about them, we can be there, but sometimes their energy just so zaps us and then we can't get, you know, we have a hard time getting back to our, that like zero point because we're in that humanness. So, you know, and it just, it's hard and. I think that's a lot of what happens is we get there and we start getting there and then other energies from out there just come in and totally zap us and we're not prepared for it either too sometimes. And I think that's the other thing that can kind of throw us way off of our, you know, what's going on and where we're at and what we're trying to do. And sometimes it makes us scramble and it sometimes takes a while because then we're totally discombobulated and, you know, Everything's all wonky. Yeah, I totally get that, Dan. The, the, you know, and that's that's why I'm not as probably social as a lot of people are, and and it's just because of the well, it's just all the stuff that comes up for me, you know, and that's kind of the thing is we have to recognize that when we are being, you know, when we feel frustration or, or whatever it is that, you know, this, this 
whatever comes up when we're around other people, it's, it's ourselves. We have to realize it's our perception of the situation. And, um, and that's a hard thing to recognize sometimes, you know, but I realize it. I know that, that for me, feeling around a lot of other people and um, that don't think the same way I do, you know, it's hard. It's so hard because I'm like, you know, this is the space I want to be in. I want to work on myself. I want to be, you know, more um, not constantly down on everything and and you know because I know that's stuff I have to work on because I have I have a negative side and you know my husband will attest to that he's he's not in here at the moment but he would be sitting there going yeah mm -hmm, yeah and um and so like for me it's hard to be around my mom you know because my mom for me she, she my sister made a comment one time she's like she's the most negative positive person I know <laughs> like wait what you know she's all seems like she's happy go lucky but everything that comes out of her mouth is negative you know and and I feel like that's something I I I need to work on when I'm around her it, it just like throws it in my face all this stuff I'm seeing about her is you know it's stuff that I recognize about myself and and that's really difficult and uh, and I think a lot of times we don't even recognize that that's what's happening is that we just get rubbed wrong by by people and we assume it's that person and um and when in reality the things that we're we're feeling is because of what's going on inside of ourselves or maybe it's it's things we recognize or we don't recognize that that's something that we do and um and then you know we don't want to be we don't want to look in the mirror you know <laughs> i mean nobody wants to look in the mirror and see the things that they need to work on i mean but yet at the same time we're here on this group and we're trying to recognize the things that we need to work on right and uh, but then again that's just a judgment too of you know do we really need to work on it who knows i don't know we just can be just trust that we are who we are and and then it's all okay right but <laughs> i don't know I need to recognize when I have these things coming up so that I can, you know, I don't have to go through them again. You know, that's the biggest thing is just not, you know, I don't want to keep going through the same things that I've been going through over and over and over again, because it's painful, it's frustrating, it's, it's all of that. So I, you know, I pull away a lot of times. I just pull, pull myself out of the situation so I don't have to have that experience. And, um, you know, and I, I recognize that if I really want to work on something, then, you know, I have to put myself into experiences where I'm going to experience the thing I need to work on, right? So, but I don't have to do it constantly. <clears throat> so, uh, that's, that's it for the moment. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, on some of that, because, like, there are times where I wish I could be more like Kat, Catherine, because... There are a lot of attributes that, that Catherine has that, you know, I so wish I could, you know, could have. And she'll probably turn around and say, but you can't have those things. You just need to, you know, and I know that's, you know, you know, and she would say it with love and everything. But sometimes I say that, but at the same time, sometimes I don't want to hear it, too. You know, that's the other part of, you know, like it goes back to, like you said, we don't really want to look at the false or what we what is wrong or what you know where we put our part out there and because we want to look at ourselves as being i don't want to say perfect because i'm no way means anything perfect but you know we do sometimes have that um um overlaid perception of you know who we really are when and but yet really if we go to the deep recesses, recesses of our heart we know that we're really not like that in a lot of cases. And I think that's the other part of, you know, what the, this chapter in this book is talking about, you know, true love, true trust in, um, true, um, you know, whatever, true harmony. And that might be part of the, I don't want to say the magic potion or whatever, but part of the equation I'm getting to where all this can move forward for all of us.
I really want to talk more about um, part of what Catherine touched on earlier, but we are at the top of the hour because she was talking about um, her um, healing business and um, and that creating, you know, if you if you want to have somebody to heal, that means somebody has to be ill. And um, and so I really want to get into that that aspect of the conversation, but I think we're going to have to do that next week because that's like a whole nother topic beyond our, our zero point conversation for today. Um, but let's try and remember to talk about that because there's a whole section on um, that. That'll be a really interesting exploration. Um, I think for today, we can kind of maybe just, when we think about this zero point is to see if we can recognize little things throughout this next week of where we can stop causing ourselves pain for things that are painful. <laughs> you know, it's like stop adding pain on top of our pain. And not not, you know, not necessarily physical pain, although I, I think that, you know, all of us have some level of physical pain at our ages and our lives, but um, we can stop being so angry at our bodies for being pain, being in pain. That's one little thing we can work on. But um, you know, in, in other aspects it's you know, it's just like when, when we are wanting something and we can recognize when fear or judgments come up about those things. And, um, you know, because in, I think in, in a, lot of, a lot of this book, it's talking about, you know, creating and, and uh, manifesting our desires and our wants and, and interests and, and all of that. And so when we're trying to focus on those, they're not focus on, but we're trying to be creative in our lives and create something that we don't have um, is just to kind of recognize when some of the, the thoughts come up in our head that are contradictory to our desire and when we can recognize those contradictions and then maybe just simply use this statement of I am self-love to let go of those fears and contradictions so that we can trust <clears throat> and just trust that we're going to know the right thing to do in the right moment in order to create the things that it is that we want and i think that 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 can be a good exercise for us what do you guys think definitely and and i love your idea of you know that we all have at least one area of our life where we can find the still point and I think if you can just find it in one area, that's a beginning, you know, and then you can reach out to other areas. And, you know, if you think that you've reached a place of non judgmentality about something, go sit amongst people who have differing viewpoints and then see how non judgmental you are. <laughs> because. From what I can see, everybody out there that's talking about non-judgmentality is making a judgment just by telling you not to like, you know what I mean? It's it's it, you go from you know one side to the other, and and I'm not I'm not trying to um, you know throw anybody under the bus or anything like that because this is. This is just how I see it in my head, you know, but whether you're, you know, like I see a lot of places where religion has caused harm. Now we can say, well, we've allowed religion to cause harm. Okay, I'm all right with that, you know, by buying into whatever we've allowed that. Um, but then people tend to swing like the opposite way to quote, spirituality and yet spirituality is just as judgmental in my mind as religion is because when you really start delving into you know these some of these concepts of still point and non-judgmentality <clears throat> if that's even a word um you know then you start or at least i did i'm not going to say you did then i started beating myself up about not being able to be in the still point more about not being able to to not be judgmental like you just go from one self 
chastisement to another one just with a different set of rules, basically. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? So, you know, my still point is going to be that hopefully that that place of balance where I recognize myself as a spiritual being, as a human and as an animal, which humans are. And I really think that we need to keep in mind that we are animals and, and we have uh, chemicals that run our bodies that react to things that are just programmed into us through eons of, of uh, whatever, you know, and our bodies just react and and chemicals in your bodies can cause you to act out in ways that you wouldn't normally. So I think we have to take all of that into consideration. And, and when you claim I am self-love, I mean, to me, that's not even a comfortable thing to say, which tells me I've got some shit around that to work on. Okay. <laughs> like To me, it's somehow it's easier to say, I am divine love than it is for me to say I am self-love because there's things about myself that I don't love. And I recognize that. And that's what we're working on here. So anyway, I'll quit rambling, but thank you. Love you guys. Have a great week. Why didn't you do this earlier? <laughs> I need to uh, I need to uh, assess thinking about myself as an animal. I don't think I ever have done that very much. Uh, I've always thought it was such a funny thing when people say, you know, describe yourself as an animal. You know, which which animal would you choose to be and all that kind of stuff. And yet I'm watching British uh, television quite a bit these days. And uh, that just really meshes with me and uh, the way various people are portrayed. And I think that uh, that it will definitely give me something to think about, to think about my, myself as an animal and uh, ruled by um, hormones and, and all of that sort of thing, which I've tended to not think about a lot in my life. So um, maybe that could be my, probably not, my zero point. I'll have to think about something else. Anyway, <laughs> thanks everybody for uh, the, the the new thought waves and um, for the love. Love you guys all. I will jump out and I uh, have to admit, I missed a little bit of the last little bit you guys were saying because I had a phone call come in that I had to take. Um, it was actually my one friend that I'm helping out. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, as always, everything that we cover and go over, you know, gives me things to think about and choose. And in kind of with what Cameron was talking about with, you know, if I were to pick an animal or something that, you know, um, I, I love horses and, um, you know, think they're beautiful and everything, but, Oddly enough, that's not the animal I would pick. Um, but there's something about otters that fascinate me because they're, you know, somehow they survive out there in the world, but they're, you know, people don't really, unless they see them like along the shoreline floating on their back and, you know, either cleaning the food that they're doing and getting it ready to eat or, you know, the, the way they kind of like clean themselves and then the way they just kind of lay there and float on their back and just kind of like, okay, I'm here, you know, so what if the world's going on around me? You know, that's kind of how, you know, maybe that's that's the zero point that they're at and maybe that's, you know, kind of like where I'd kind of like to be at. So that's why, you know, I think I said the otter. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a great conversation and I love what everybody shared today. Just popping in for a second here. 
you can research um, the spirit animal and mine has been the heron. It's a bird and just look it up on Google it. The animal you think and the traits of it and it's amazing how much heron has showed up in my life lately. <laughs> But see you guys next week. I was reminded, Catherine, when you were talking of the, the concept of um, I am everything, but I am also nothing. And, you know, we're, we're this book talks about this idea of you know, at the, the smallest level, we're all the same substance, basically. And, and I, I think about that a lot of this whole idea of, you know, as spirits that we're all one, we're all one kind of, you know, energetic being, if you will, but yet at the same time, we're also human. And, you know, at the cellular level, we're all the same. And yet, at the cultural level, we're all different, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, at the, the universe aspect of how tiny we are in, in this, in the space of the universe. And yet when we're right here in our moment, it's everything. And, um, and there is this kind of idea of trying, trying to be one, you know, just be spiritual. And I, that's not, that's not what we're here for, you know, we're, we're here to have this human experience, but yet we can think about, oops, my battery's about to die, let me get it plugged in, um, but yet we can, we, we can have the human experience, we can embrace it, we can, it, when everything about it, but yet at the same time, we can also uh, feel ourselves as the spiritual aspect of, our, of it as well and and I, it's just fascinating that we can be here and be completely immersed in this human experience and have all the pains and frustrations and angers and ups and downs and everything and yet also bring ourselves to a zero point of peace right inside of the middle of it and imagine ourselves as an otter or or an eagle or I imagine myself as a tree a lot of the times and um, and what that peacefulness would be like. So it's it's both. And, and when they're talking about this kind of polarity aspect of it, I think that's what they're saying. It's like, you know, spiritual versus human, everything versus nothing. I mean, it's, it's all, it's all part of this, this experience that we are having right now. And we get to examine all the different levels of possibilities of everything that we are and and we can cause ourselves pain in it more pain than what we might be experiencing as a human or we can cause ourselves more peace uh, while we're having this experience as a human and and we get to choose we then and it can be either way and both ways are fine it's all good you know and then i think there's an, a point in here where they're talking about this idea of it's all good and um, by good, it just all is. It, it, it's just, we are. And so therefore we can, <laughs> so we do, right? So anyway, that's all I have to say for this week. Uh, next week, I think we'll jump on here and start talking about these, these other ideas of um, compassion and, and um, uh, you know, the, the different sides of, of how a situation can be so many different, uh, I think you see it from so many different aspects and, and get so much different experiences out of it. So it'll be real interesting when we get on for next week. But for those of you who are watching, if you found this conversation interesting, go ahead and click a like and, on the YouTube video. And if you're in Facebook, then you know comment on this video as, if you're watching it. And um, if you'd like to participate with us, we would love to have you. You can go to mindsetmasterycollective.com and find a link to get into our Facebook group. And there uh, you can ask to join us. And I post a link every week for our Zoom meeting. So all you have to do is just watch for it or look for it in the in the community, which it's all over the place. So um, you can jump in here at any point. Um, 
when we're having our conversation. We generally meet 10 a.m. Eastern on Saturdays, and I think that's 7 a.m. Pacific, so you've got a wide range of times, depending on where you are in the world, <laughs> to go on here. So anyway, with that, guys, have an awesome, amazing week, and we'll see you next time on the Saturday Morning Mastermind. Bye for now. Thank you.